None of EPM Partners, Bob Kendall, or any of its officers, directors, employees, other personnel, representatives, agents, or independent contractors is, in such capacities, a licensed financial advisor, a registered investment advisor, or a registered broker-dealer. None of EPM Partners or its personnel gives investment or financial advice or makes investment recommendations, nor are any of them in the business of affecting trades or directing client equity accounts or giving futures trading advice tailored to any particular client situation. Nothing contained in VPN Partners broadcasts on its websites or in its written materials constitutes a solicitation, recommendation, promotion, endorsement, or offer by others described above of any particular security, other investment product, transaction, or investment. Copyright 2014, VPN Partners, all rights reserved. Terms of use apply. Reproduction, adaptation, distribution, public display, exhibition for profit, or storage in any electronic storage media in whole or in part is prohibited under penalty of law. Good morning, everyone. It is Process Warriors time. Uh, Mitch and I are excited about today. This is going to be uh, somewhat structured, somewhat impromptu, I guess. Right, Mitch? As we Sounds about right. They all are, aren't they? I think they are, probably, to a point. We put the PowerPoint up here just to uh, hope, hopefully, will guide us in a direction. Um, That's right. Anyway, uh, the continuing saga is going on, and we are uh, uh, going to be talking about deploying capital and some other elements. Mitch, why don't you go ahead and go through some of the elements we're going to be doing today? Well, like you said, uh, you know, all that we've talked about right now uh, up until this point has been all about how to uh, get us to the point of actually deploying these strategies into, into account. So what we're going to be doing is talking about the considerations that you need to make when it comes time to actually deploy strategies, whether they're, they're brand new strategies, whether they're brand new clients, whether they're new money uh, of existing clients coming in. We're going to be talking about all the different facets to this. Uh, we're also going to talk about how to merge some of these strategies. So we've, we've hinted up until now uh, that you do have the ability to take, let's say, two different models and, and splice them together uh, and, and then take them to your custodian. So we do have a tool that will very easily do that for you. And so we're going to be going through all these steps today to help you get these strategies up and running uh, within your practice as, as easy as possible for you. Why does it feel like we're not going to finish this mission today? Or we just I hope started. so. <laughs> it just feels like that was a lot you just said. I, see, I, see, when you say something like that, you're, I, I'm just <laughs> sure that we're going to get 30 minutes into this conversation and we're going to be like, oh, I guess we're done. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, right. That's not going to happen. All right. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, why don't we go ahead and start with the PowerPoint. But, I, I you know, I, it just... It, the conversation around this stuff, folks, and, and this is the point of of the entire this whole thing that we're doing here with the, with these broadcasts and these ongoing, really ongoing training and talking about things. It's just a conversation is can get just go down a trail. So, Bishop and I are going to do best uh, to stay on track, and uh, um, we never know who's going to take us down some path in, uh, on the next show. So, anyway, why don't you go ahead and we'll see what we get going here. All right. So again, we're talking about deploying capital. So, uh, you know, let, let's start with the, the most common question. What do you do when we're at the top of the market? Like we're, we're at right now. Um, you know, what do you do also when we're at the bottom of the market and everything in between? So uh, yesterday, I believe we hit all time new highs. Isn't that right? Uh, so yeah, I, I believe we did. Yeah. So so that's pretty much every day anymore. Right? Oh, yeah. You just go yeah, lately. It has day. been. Yeah. Um, so, you know, let's, let's do a little bit of story time here. Uh, I think back to a conversation we had with uh, an advisor who um, he had gotten either some new clients or had a new strategy. And it, when it came time to actually uh, deploy that, that strategy uh, with his, his clients, he kept seeing the headlines that, all right, we've hit an all-time new high. And this was at the beginning of the year last year, uh, right after we had had recovered uh, all the losses dating back to 2007. And then I probably put in commentary that uh, the death pattern was on. You got it. <laughs> yep. You, you, I think you know where I'm going with this. So, I do. 
So it, it's one of those things where we have the system telling us one thing, where uh, his accounts were fully invested when it came to the actual portfolios. Uh, the commentary on the side uh, that, that you put together said, you know, watch out for this death pattern. And uh, so what the advisor did is he did nothing. He, he sat on his hands and thought, well, you know, I'll wait for, for the dip. Uh, and so what ended up happening is about six months went by uh, before he finally reached out to us and said, well, what should I do? And by that time, he had already missed uh, the vast majority of the run-up of the market for last year. And uh, he was left with the question of, all right, now that the market's gone up another uh, 12 percentage points or, or so, what do I do at this point? So I thought it'd be good to, to delve into this right now. What do well, we do, Bob? Well, I, I think part, part of the problem is, you know, and uh, sometimes I get frustrated with commentary, even though I know when I was talking about the death pattern, we're still talking about the, the market continuing on. Uh, people, you know, let's face it, uh, there's so many blog sites out there, you read the headlines and you go to the next, you go to the next, you don't ever really read the story. You right. know, you don't hear all the details that are necessary. It's sort of like how the world has evolved, you know, it's Twitter, you know, it's 20, 25 words and that's all you read, you never actually click on the story to see what the story was about. And uh, it's, a, it's a continuing issue with uh, society today, I think, and just how we respond to things. But uh, from the standpoint of, uh, actually, I have to find this thing. I, I thought I had found it. Um, I moved last year, and just about everything I thought I knew where it was is in a box somewhere hidden, hiding from me. But th there was a, a white paper we did many years ago was uh, on on this subject, and it was it's it's was fairly deep from the standpoint of, okay, what do I do? Okay, do I deploy half of the money and then find a way to bring the other half in? Do I deploy it all just at any time I get new money? And we'll, we'll I guess we'll try to contrast. I, it's really about new money when you're deploying anyway. So, and then, or do I try to time it somehow and wait for a dip? And that's probably, that came up with the, the worst idea because what's a dip and you never really, right. you never get one when you need it, right? So it, and the market keeps going away, so now what? Well, I'll wait for a dip, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait, and you end up with uh, your customer money not, not exposed. And the, there's a, several things that happen in this scenario, I think, when you're, when you're looking at deploying this capital is the fear that if I deploy it today, the market's gonna go down and this brand new client's gonna have a bad experience. And, and there's no way, you think about it, so forget that VPM exists and go back to modern portfolio theory. What would you do? You'd deploy the money. You wouldn't right. even Every think about it. Every day is a good day. Bye. Every day is a good day, right. And you just don't think about it, tell the customer about long term, blah, blah, blah. And you go on, you know, you go to the next client and find some mutual funds, you throw them in there and that's it. So one of the anxieties that I see is that VPM brings in this some sort of anxiety because there is a timing element to it that somehow there's something bad that you can do. And, and at this white paper that we wrote, the hypothesis of all the work that we did in looking at different ideas was just put the money to work. And it almost doesn't matter where, where it is to a large degree when you're looking at, you know, should you be deploying this capital you know, uh, fully or partially, there's just no way to fi figure that out. I mean, I feel like I'm a pretty pretty decent uh, analyst and I can't figure out which are the, the good days and bad days to do that, you know. And and there's some other things I think when we'll, we'll bring up VPM 2.0, but there's some other things that you could, you could talk about. Uh, current situation um, is that you are you know, you're, you've got to look at a couple of things. What are the duration of the trade? So let's say you bring up your portfolio and this thing's been long for two years and you know, the market's still going up. Is that, does that feel more dangerous? Yeah, because the, the portfolio's long in the tooth. Um, you know, there, maybe there's points in time where you can make a lucky shot and not put the money in. But really what, and we talked about this, I don't know, four or five shows ago, looking at rolling return, looking at one year expectations, starting to build some sort of story around deploying the capital at any given time. That's why we put that one year, two year rolling windows there so you can start to see what kind of exposure you're taking at any moment in time. And that's probably, uh, we'll have to bring up a portfolio and, and probably discuss that, Mitch. So you have sure. some thoughts on this as well? Well, I mean, it's it's just that, I mean, what you, you've, you've hit on a couple different points. Like, you know, how do you know that, that like last year in this, this case with the advisor, how did we know that it was going to be, 
you know, just somewhere going up further up the market as opposed to actually having the market roll over. Yeah. And I think a lot of that anxiety does necessarily come from just that, that shift in thinking of the always invested strategy to this, this more active approach where there is some timing element uh, in play. I, I will say, uh, you know, one of the strategies that I, I use for my own money is uh, what I've nicknamed the Matador strategy, which is using UPRO. So it's a, a leveraged uh, ETF strategy. And uh, the last bit of that uh, had a, a signal this week to, to go ahead and buy. And so here I am, I'm, I'm buying at least a, a portion of, of my assets uh, in UPRO uh, because the signals tell me to do it. It's got yeah. a great track record. And I, I realized I'm, I, I pulled the trigger on a, a two times or three times leveraged uh, ETF on the, the day that the market hit a, a new high. And I'm okay with that because I know that there's, you know, we're, we're gonna be going up higher. Now in this case, that's how the strategy calls for it. There's going to be those times where I'm going to be deploying, going into the top of the market, and there's going to be, or there's going to be other times where I'm going to be sitting on the sidelines waiting for that that next trend. Well, to I have another tool I want to show everybody you can actually use. It's it's called a crystal ball. It's right <laughs> here, and uh, the crystal ball. This, mine doesn't work very well, but maybe you can get a better one. I, I it was pretty pricey for a pure piece of crystal like this, but you know. Um, and the, that's the that's the problem is you're guessing and so the only way to come across to and and do this right and to do good by your clients and do good by your business is to is to have a, an actual strategy that that works and I think if you go look at and when we go in and look at some of the, the 2 stats and stuff and you start to look at the actual uh, uh, rolling returns we can develop a concept of what what you're going to do. And, and one of the things in deploying capital, let's say for instance, um, even a global equity four, uh, we're pretty much fully invested again as of yesterday. Right. And so you look at the duration, you got half of the portfolio is new, half of it has, has been on for a while. So there's a rotation strategy. So you can look at deploying new capital and in, in, in those strategies right now to me is like a, a brand new trade even though it's happening at this at this uh, level where it is in the market. So you just want to you want to be able to um, uh, just put this money to work and we'll talk about the rolling returns because you can see what a one year expectation you can see the worst the best you can see all of these things and even in uh, even if you deployed capital in November of 2007, literally at the 2007 slash eight highs, everybody calls it 08 highs. The high was actually in, in 07. 07. Yeah. Uh, Thanksgiving is what I always refer to. It yeah, as. It, it was. It was a November high. And even if you put money right there, even looking at ETFDI or the global equity strategies, you, you had about a 14% downside buying the top of the market compared to ultimately the market being down close to the, what 36 to 42 range, depending on what you're looking at. So the bottom line is there's always going to be risk in deploying capital at, at different times. And that rolling return charts, to me, gives me the confidence at least to sit down and build a dialogue. If we were talking to you and your brand new advisor just talk, looking at a, a new strategy you have, that's exactly how we would uh, we would approach it with you is to look at those at those ratios, at where you are, and and also I talked about uh, one of the things with, you know see here we go because this was I said there's a lot to, a lot to talk about sure. is looking at the current drawdown factor as well as a place to 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 buy into and chances are right now there's probably not a lot of uh, current drawdowns uh, at the moment but there's certainly um, there's, that's another factor to look at. So when we get over to 2.0 and we're looking at this stuff, we'll go on. Okay. Yeah, I put the other question up there. Uh, obviously, no one's really thinking about the bottom of the market at this point, but you know that's that's a related question as well uh, because you know what do I do if I've already ridden down a, uh, the, the prior model? Um, so if I was had an MPT approach, this was more of a, a scenario that, that crept up when advisors came on board. In, in 08 or 09 because they, they had already ridden their, their strategies all the way down to the bottom and now we're telling them you know they should be 100% cash let's say uh, and at that point they had already walked it all the way down to the bottom of course the question is you know who, who knows what the bottom is until we actually right. finally reach the bottom right and then move off of it so it's that hindsight bias in place yeah and um, you know but I, I read an uh, interesting article on Bloomberg this morning I probably should tweet this I, I wanted to read it again before I put it out there but it was talking about 
why it's a lot easier to pick a bottom than to pick a top. And because the, the bottoms, you know, they're very emotional and all, all the elements are there. But it's the same thing. It's easy to deploy capital when prices are cheap is really what it comes down to. It's easier to go, you know what, let's put some money to work here. You got a good strategy. You get uh, this was the story that Mitch was just referencing in 08 is basically uh, what I said to folks that were coming on board then was, you know, you get out, we'll get you back in when it's the right time. If if the worst case is when the, it, I mean, it was right, a lot of, lot of uh, picked up a lot of new clients around the Lehman crisis, around that, that last quarter of 08, which was pretty brutal, not to mention how crazy the first quarter of 09 was. Right. But it was really, you know, my, the good news is, is people always talk about the sell discipline in, in VPM. It also has a buy discipline. And we've yet to miss, uh, we were talking yesterday when, on Market Thunder, I pointed out that the, uh, the, the Spain, Spain was up 39%. VPM caught that rally, but we weren't thinking about Spain, so we didn't, we didn't right. catch it because we didn't have it on there. The reality is, is that there's both a buy and sell discipline, and it's all about deploying capital, delivering risk-adjusted returns. And as like I said before, everybody wants to beat the indices. All I want to do is average about 8.5% every year, no matter what the market is, over three- and five-year windows. And I'm one of the best on Wall Street. And that's pretty much what we've delivered over time. There's been windows of time where you could, you could uh, whine and complain, and your customers could go, gee, we should be making more. But the bottom line is, when you look at this thing and you get in those three, five, and ten-year windows, you're looking at you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing, and 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 you know it's the same it's the same argument all along is you know how how well are you doing with uh, MPT in the bad bad years? You know you're just right. the the market's the bad cop, right? So the fact that you have this strategy is supposed to get in and out somehow. There's it, there's not supposed to be any risk. Well, there is, and it's a it's about uh, adjusting that risk over time and then delivering those those returns uh, and they and it takes time to get there so you know we had uh, folks get frustrated in 11 and left VPM I guarantee you I haven't seen it few of them maybe did better but all you they they got out at the low it was right. just like it was the wrong time to make the move they did it they did exactly what they tell their customers not to do they did that and, and they probably went in a buy and hold and that's worked uh, okay. But even then, if they do an allocation strategy, you're not beating the S&P because you're, you're allocated out to different asset classes. You get five percent. You go into the old world of, of diversification and you end up with, um, you know, uh, really diversification just uh, dilutes the performance in, in right. the end. And it's supposed to. It's supposed to mitigate Upside, it, it mitigates upside volatility as well as downside to a point. And, and when you get into the big crises, and, you know, I've talked about that, you know, we tend to be living on the planet now in this crisis mentality with what's next. And for five years, there hasn't been a what's next. There's been threats of what's next, but there hasn't been one. So did we want to move on to? Uh, yeah, let's go to the next slide. And this really is just a, a segue to, to going to 2.0. So, uh, you know, what do you do when you, you want to implement a, a new strategy? And so I, I thought we should uh, pull up 2.0 at this point. Can you go ahead and, and load sure. that up? Sure. There you go. You can drive. All right. And uh, speaking of new strategies, uh, if you go over to subscriptions, uh, you'll notice that we have some more Premier portfolios. So I, I mentioned this last week uh, that we were loading these up here. So you see we have the uh, TD and the Schwab strategies uh, already loaded up. Uh, so I just want to let you know that that is available to you. Uh, we talked about these uh, these non-transaction fee strategies that that replicate uh, the existing Premier portfolios. So I just want to let you know that that's where you'll find them if if that's something you want to take a look at. So one of the ones that we also created uh, was a uh, a new bond strategy, which I simply called uh, the the Premier uh, High Yield Bond. Uh, let me pull this up. I thought I'd already subscribed to it. Bear with me one second. There it is, Premier High Yield. It's the only one you didn't subscribe to. The only one I didn't subscribe to, of course. That's how it goes. And we'll click Apply. And there we go. So here we have a 
premier high yield. So this is a, a, a bond strategy. Uh, as the name implies, we're, we're using five different uh, bond funds uh, in this. And what it's designed to do, uh, all these funds have been around since 2000, so I just loaded these up. Uh, it's got one common goal, which is participating in uh, high yield bonds, and we're just letting VPM uh, work with us. Notice so let's we say put in five funds, not 55. That's right. <laughs> even not then, every uh, bond fund you, on the planet. We even then, you could probably uh, you know tame this down a bit uh, if, if you don't need this many bond funds. But I thought this is a, a nice mix of, of different uh, fund families uh, with their high yield bond funds. Uh, so let's here we have this this brand new strategy, Bob. We want to we want to get it up and running. What are the considerations that we need to make at this point? Uh, you know, you see that we're already ninety six percent invested uh, in these bond funds. So what what should we, we what should we be aware of? If well, we want to first thing going? first thing I always do. I I'd always want to be. Uh, um, over here, I think I can get it on the screen and still show what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm not in the way. Um, you might be in the way, so I might be in the way. Yeah, let me let me move you out of the way for a second. But the yeah, so what what we have the first thing I always look at is the the trade profile. So I'm going to get there's a couple of elements here. I don't think we've talked a lot about the stats up in the top. We've talked a lot about the histogram, but we really. We really haven't talked about a lot of the the elements on the on the top here, which is uh, trades per week, but more importantly, average current duration. This thing is is uh, is pretty long in the tooth. Average days long is 158. We're 228 on this, which is uh, somewhat interesting on, on as far as this goes. So we are long in the tooth, and you're going to see, although some of the positions um, here are Still in accumulate uh, currents 159, uh, average long 281, 185, 275, and this is the one's probably kicking things over. Uh, it is, um, what is that? What is that symbol right there, Mitch? N T H E X. Uh, let me pull this one up. Yeah, again. so it's in a hold, but it's it's been long for 438 days. That's uh, two years and change. Let's bring up the chart on that real quick. But I, I think when you're when you're looking at that, yeah, this thing, would you put a money fund in there? Just give him a hard time. <laughs> Northeast investors. We, we, told, just... we told everybody not to do that, so he puts one in there. But no, it, this thing is just uh, roaring up from, you know, substantial um, move here. And uh, anyway, yeah, so th that's the only symbol that's long in the tooth. And the trend is firmly in place. It's doing, uh, if you've watched Market Thunder, you understand probably the, the how the PPMs are used or how they how they function within the trend following viewpoint that VPM brings in. So um, yeah, so first thing looking at that average average trade uh, average uh, longs per day is three. We right now have four, so we're a little bit above that, which tells me that the the capital is is being uh, deployed pretty heavily here so we're looking at as Mitch pointed out 96 percent invested and you know this this is kind of interesting so here's here's the other thing I, I want to look at and we were talking about the um, the the drawdowns the average drawdown is uh, it's crazy 0.64 so five eighths of one percent is the average drop in the equity before it makes a new high so each one of these it's measuring each one of the wiggles in this chart. There's a couple that are bigger. We we don't have a uh, the largest drawdown in here. I, I, I don't know. If, if, is this a new premiere? So does this mean we're going to have new fact sheets, Matt? Yeah, Mitch? yep. That's actually one of the things that uh, we'll be publishing today is the premiere fact sheets. Uh, so those will be uh, on the website at the end of the day today. Okay. So anyway, th this uh, is pretty pretty interesting. We got uh, and we're talking about the rolling returns here. So we're looking at the best on this is 47%. The, the worst was 9% and the average is 6.16%. And these are all total returns on this, right? Correct, yeah. yep. Yeah, so, so we're looking at standard deviation of 10. So I guess if you came in and stubbed your toe, you, you could end up with a, a, a minus four plus 16 kind of range with, a, with best bet of 6.16 and, and your average return. And I'm going to go to I'm going to toggle over here just get some of the stuff off so we can see this a little bit bigger, big, bigger here. The uh, 
notice if you look at the one year rolling returns, you can see these are looking back. So January 09 is when this money was made 41%. So it depends on, so it's a one year look back from, from the point that you're looking. But you can see, look at this, eight, seven, six. I mean, this thing's real consistent at generating somewhere between two and 6% return. And it, it's a high yield bond fund. So th that's pretty good, especially if you've got income clients that, you know, looking at, for income. Uh, that's pretty steady Eddie, I would say. Yep. Uh, you know, so this is what you, this is what you want to see. Uh, as Mitch uh, mentioned earlier, we are, we are putting out, uh, we are putting out more of these premieres. Is we're finding that. Uh, I think we're we're finding that there's a lot of errors being generated out in the field. So we're being more proactive about building strategies that we know have been reviewed properly, and that you folks can deploy out there. And you can take our ideas and build off of them. That's part of what it's there for as well. So, Mitch, so you go ahead. If, let's say let's say I have this uh, this. Portfolio, I think it looks uh, looks great. I want to deploy it in client accounts. Uh, what what concerns should I have? I mean, should I just uh, take uh, the existing bond strategy that I have right now and just dump it completely over to this, or what what well, should I be doing? That's a whole other question because that's transitioning money. It's not uh, it's deploying, yes, but it's also making decisions about what to do. And and one of the things that if you owned a bunch of bonds, I would say no, don't do that. Uh, okay. What I would do is put those bonds, uh, hopefully, uh, whether they're funds or ETFs or whatever they might be, put them into a watch list and let VPM tell you when to get out of those. And then when this when this strategy would, you know, hopefully there's some, some relevance that uh, bonds are all going to roll over together. And you would uh, deploy this capital uh, once you've gotten out of the funds. There's no reason to buy one bond fund and flop it over for another. Uh, too confusing to a client to try to do those kind of things. I, that, that would be my opinion. What about the scalability factor? Let's say I have a, a client that, that came on board with a number of different bond bond funds, or let's say I, you know, I have a dozen clients that have come on board in the last couple months, and they have they have various different bond holdings from other advisors, and when they came on board, uh, what's, what's the best approach? Do I just well, simply put them on a watch list, or do I just do a hard start, stop, and, and start with a new strategy. If you walked in my office, I'd probably blow them all out and just switch them over so it'd be easy to run. But that it really comes down to what you're comfortable with. It comes down with uh, the nice thing about this strategy, I want to go back to is, as I mentioned, it's got a very low volatility uh, from a, from the average drawdown. And let me just get over to the, the summary here on this. I want to see what the, well, uh, the current drawdown is zero. It's at a new high. Uh -huh. So um, this thing is only going to drop three quarter percent on average. So if you saw it at three quarter percent or more, that's a bonus to put this money to work. So you can flop them over there if you, uh, from a scalability standpoint, if you get, you know, if you, you can really mess up your practice, especially if you have some good traction. You're bringing in new, new clients and you get this whole big thing you're watching all these watch lists and trying to manage assets that you don't want to that you're just trying to get transitioned it really depends on i think you have to look at taxation issues and other other things that are going to affect the account because you you, you just can't do things just to do them uh, you've got to make sure you've thought through all this stuff so maybe you end up with being able to deploy the bulk of the capital, maybe flop it over to this strategy. It's it's really, I think there's a lot of individual decisions that have to be made there to make that work. It's, it's not a cut and dry, do this, do that kind of thing. Right. Because the question, you know, it's one thing, let's say the client brings in new money on the account, deploy it, okay? No, it's a no brainer. But if you got a new client, you got a new relationship, you're trying to, you're looking at tax efficiencies. You got to look at the conversations that you're having with that client, uh, the amount of money and the impact, the true impact on on their on their uh, their account from all, all di different aspects. I think. Yeah, and and I would agree with you on that. Uh, you know, obviously, you, you don't you don't want to create a, an undue tax burden uh, when it comes to deploying whatever their their existing uh, assets are, however they're 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 currently allocated, whether it's um, with a number of funds, if it's a similar strategy. One thing that I, I, I would mention, though, is you know if you were to, to be
be working with a third party money manager. Let's say you're transferring a current brokerage uh, account into some sort of third party money managers. They're not going to be doing that. They're going to go ahead and just deploy it right to whatever their current holdings are because that's that's what they do. I mean, you're, you're currently taking whatever the strategy is right now and you're giving it over to someone else and they're going to run with with. And, with the, and you know why that's comfortable for a lot of advisors? Because they didn't do it. <laughs> right. You know, well, that's the other thing is so, it creates a nice line of demarcation to be able to yeah, say this is the and, old and, approach, this is the new one. I've always leaned towards towards doing that hard uh, transition uh, so long as there isn't you know serious tax implications to it. Just because it, it puts a clear line between the old way as well as the new way. And uh, then you're, you're, you're not having to explain away maybe some other, some other advisors' uh, past decisions. Right. Because if they're funds that you're not accustomed to, um, I don't want that responsibility to have to try to explain why it is we're still holding a potential dog. Right, and and that's that's a valid point. And that's, you know, Mitch started working with me three years ago. He used to be really passive, but <laughs> he's getting very aggressive. I don't know. If, I don't know if you folks notice that. Talked to him, but uh, I sure do. But anyway, the it, no, it is the right way to do it. And uh, but you have to look at my my comments were uh, that you need to look at that. But ultimately, I would agree that you know deploying the assets, getting control over them, getting them into whatever strategy it is that you're doing going forward. That's what they used to do. Here's what you do now, and that right. that's like I said, if if you walked into my office, that's that's what I would do, unless there were some serious implications. And the chances are there's just a, a couple that would that would affect you on that. Uh, Tagline back over to the uh, the PowerPoint, uh, if could uh, hold on one second. Okay. So we've already answered some of these 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 questions. Um, so you know we, we already just touched upon the the new account. Um, so here we have uh, here's what we just talked about: account transfer done with the number of current holdings. Of course, uh, the the easy one: if it's 100 percent cash, you, you got to deploy it. Um, so what I've what I've recommended is uh, especially if you've had a large tranche of orders like a week like this where we had a lot of buying on the equity side go ahead and, and deploy it immediately if it's on a let's say a thursday or friday and that the cash is finally starting to uh, settle uh, what i would do is i would blow out the the current positions if it's something that we want to exit out of so that i could be fresh for monday's orders so that i could deploy it right from from monday uh, if if it is something that I am going to be doing a hard transition with, so it's half past the hour. We got a lot to do. Uh, I know. Uh, I know. Don't make me Bring right. <laughs> don't make me right. Um, yeah, there's just a there's just a lot. Like I said, there, these conversations I think are good to understand. Probably most of this, you guys already got this, but they're you but know it, it it comes up. So you know it we, does we come up, touch. and uh, you know uh, it does come up. Uh, here I also have new money in, in active strategies. What I mean by that, it's, a, it's an existing account, client puts in new deposits. And as you've already mentioned, uh, you know, the client brings in, let's say they, they bring in a new lump sum, another $50,000, $100,000 uh, that's to an, an existing account. So yeah. let's say they already have a quarter million dollars, they bring in another 50, another 100,000. What you wanna do is immediately get that up and running, uh, get that invested in, you're, you're just deploying that. One of the things that does make it a little bit tricky is when, these, when clients do some sort of systematic deposits. Uh, like a, a regular, you know, monthly deposit or a, a quarterly. Um, do you have any thoughts about that before I say? Yeah, I, I would store up. Maybe do even though they have money, just leave some money on 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 cash. It's usually those deposits aren't usually material. Right. And and you might want to just store them up, and unless depending on the amounts that come in relative to the size of the account, I wouldn't worry about deploying those. Maybe on a quarterly basis or. You know, so you don't go getting a lot of tickets because you're gonna right. just to get that client back in. If you get five long, you get five new tickets for that same account. And if they're putting it in every month, I mean, you can you can really jack up the uh, the uh, ticket cost on something like this as well if if that's what they're doing. And uh, so, you know, I I don't know. I think most of those are usually smaller accounts. I could be wrong, uh, but. You know, you might even store. Like I said, it, I would say if it was out of whack by maybe five or ten percent, I would yep. I would maybe deploy it then. And even then, that's going to be non-material. If you have, and I talked about this before, and, and the problem I've always had with MPT is these little three and five percent allocations. They are a joke. They are going to do nothing positive or negative to speak of. They're just they're part of the what I call the pie filler. So when you're looking at the pie, that's part of the filler. So to have a five or even a 10% element in cash and everything else is deployed, it's gonna be immaterial. So I'd just be careful about 
uh, creating uh, lots of tickets every quarter. All of a sudden you got you got 20, let's say you had, it was long the whole time, you get 20 new tickets uh, that you did, plus whatever you had to do to authenticate the process. And you're probably getting in all of a sudden like 40 trades on a, on a small little allocation. Right. Yeah, and this is something that I, I did have to deal with years ago. And the reason why I, I mention it, uh, as you mentioned, um, the process that, that we always put in place, and again, this is coming back to making sure that you have a process. Uh, so what I would do is I would watch for any sort of increment larger than, than 10%. Uh, and, and if it's greater than 10%, then absolutely go ahead and get that, that working. If it's less than 10%, go ahead and let that build up. And then maybe on a quarterly basis, go ahead and, and de deploy that in, in tranches, if you will, as, as far as on a quarterly basis, you take whatever's there, put it into the model. One thing, and you mentioned smaller accounts, and I'm glad you did. One of the things to keep in mind, uh, especially with, with mutual funds, uh, depending on what type of, of mutual funds you're using, especially with some of these non-transaction fee funds, they do have these, these rules when it comes to short-term redemption fees. So just a little note that I would put out there is if, if you do get in the habits of, of being really active where you, you want to deploy capital as soon as it hits the account, let's say on a monthly basis, a client makes a deposit, it's a small deposit, and you go ahead and deploy that. If, if you do make a significant move, you have to keep in mind that, that what the mutual fund company is doing is they're not looking at the, the, the the beginning date when you first took on the position, if you liquidate that fund, they're going to look at every single date that you deployed capital into it and calculate uh, the number of days from that short-term redemption fee for that portion of it. So what I'm trying to say here is that uh, if if you go ahead and deploy capital and then one week later you you liquidate that fund because you're, you're trying to match it up to the current trade, you may run into a short-term redemption fee for that portion uh, because it's, it, it is a new trade on that. So it's just one thing to keep in mind. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I, I did like to let a little bit of cash build up and then go ahead and match it to that, knowing that, of course, that I could still run into that short-term redemption fee issue, but it's, it's less of an issue because it's not scattered across the, the board. I'm not constantly having to place trades all the time for these little piddly amounts as well. All right. All right. You sunk your putt. You, I sunk my putt on it. Um, so uh, how, I, I think we need to jump forward, uh, but okay. if, unless there's material things here that uh, I know you put this uh, this together, the to account going to be invested is, or you know, when is so, it? So this, the, the Didn't last we just talk about that five different ways? Yeah, no? we did, but okay. one of the things I just want to say is yeah. make sure, you know. I'm trying, you, folks, I'm trying. I know you're me. trying. I'm not gonna let you, at least not for another 30 <laughs> seconds. All right. All right, so I mean, we talked about, you know, all these different things on, on the internal side of things. Uh, the reason why I put this on here, setting expectations, just make sure you're communicating that to the client. Um, it's very important that you you tell the client what it is you're going to do with it, not just have your own rules, because if the client isn't given expectations, they're going to be left to have their own expectations. And the reason why I am a little bit passionate about this is because years ago I did have to deal with a, a what could, be, could have been construed as a complaint because the client felt he spent too much uh, time on the sidelines in a rising market environment. So this yeah. is back in 2009, 2010, there was cash on the books. He got upset and part of the reason was he wasn't made clear as to how long the overall transfer process takes for money to hit and then what our own process was for deploying capital. And so it's just one of those things that uh, it's something that I've had to deal with and you know, no one likes complaints. Uh, so if you make sure that you set the expectations properly with the client, it's something that you shouldn't have to deal with because the client uh, has had their expectations adjusted by you and not left to their own devices. All right. All right. That was two minutes, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's keep going. All right. So now we're going to talk, uh, we're going to jump over to talking about merging, uh, merging models. Okay. So one of the tools that we have is, uh, is this multi-model allocation tool. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go over to 2.0, actually the Connect site. And then over on resources, uh, we have a downloads area. And I would strongly encourage you guys to just get curious, go ahead and, and poke around on here. We have a lot of different uh, files up here, whether they're marketing pieces, uh, fact sheets, the annual outlooks are on here as well, but we also have these utilities. So a couple of shows ago, we talked about how to properly price your portfolio. One of the other things we have on here is this multi-model allocation tool. Now uh, it's a mouthful, uh, but what it is, it's a glorified spreadsheet so that you can merge strategies uh, so let's say you have your global equity strategy four, you have this brand new high yield strategy, and now you want to put them together in one client account for suitability. Well, here's a simple tool to be able to do that. So as you see, I went ahead, 
on the website. I just downloaded the file, and it's an Excel spreadsheet that has a couple different tabs on here. Uh, I've created this tool so that you can work with four different models. Uh, that may be a bit overkill. Uh, but now that we have this loaded up, I'm going to go ahead and go back over to 2.0, and I'm going to pull up, a, we'll grab that high yield bond fund strategy. So I'll scroll down. And here's our, our high yield strategy. Now, if you go to open positions, this will tell you how the strategy is currently allocated. It tells you that the tickers and what the weightings are for each of these, as well as uh, other relevant data as far as when we, we took on this trade. So all you have to do with this tool, it's really simple. You just highlight this data right here, all the way up to cash. You can right click and go to copy. And then you can jump back over to the spreadsheet and then on the same box where it says cash, just paste this in here. Let's see if it works for me. Uh, of course not. <laughs> I'm sorry. Bob, why don't you go ahead and do it? I think it's giving me grief because I'm trying to do it through uh, through Lance. So, so go ahead and just do a copy. Copy, yeah. I want to go to the spreadsheet. First, first cell number right here? No, right on the word cash. Oh, right on the word cash. Okay, does it matter? Does it, the regular pace, keep source formatting or? Match, uh, looks like it's doing it again. Hang on. This is, this is awesome. <laughs> this yeah. is like a cooking show where your souffle goes up in flames. Um, well, hold on one second, let's see. Maybe it's because uh, we're using uh, Chrome on this. Uh, can we go ahead and open this up in Internet Explorer at least no, for? Because it don't open an Explorer because my Explorer doesn't work on this computer. All right, <laughs> this is like a cooking show. Yeah. So, uh, so what? What you should be able to do, and this is something that you could replicate on, on your machine. I'll, I'll give it a couple goes on, on my end or on on our end over here. Uh, you should be able to paste this data in, and it will fill out these these cells. Is this required that you have access? You don't require access, you just need to have Excel, which I would hope every advisor has at this point. Right, and this is uh, 360 that we're on too, so. I'm it does sure. work with the older versions as well. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure why. All right, let me let me try It doesn't on. look like there's a macro on here to me. Yep, yep, you don't need a macro or anything like that. Okay. Ah, this is. Uh, maybe I'll put your, uh, you're, you're not being exposed right now with your face and your frustration, but. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm just yeah. smiling right now. Let's see if this works. That looks like it's, not, it's doing something now. Nope. No. Well, it looks like uh, we're gonna need, need to move on. I guess we should have tested this before. Well, I did <laughs> test it on my end. Yeah. Um, anyway, what you can do, and I would encourage you to, to do this on, on your side of things. If you grab this data, copy it, and then paste it into uh, into these cells, what it does is it matches the, the 2.0 uh, or the rows on this. And you'll notice up here at the top, we have a, a weighting. So in this case, let's say I want to put the, the portfolio to be 20% or 25% uh, in this weighting. Uh, you, you can grab a couple other models. So let's say you wanted to grab your, your global equity strategy four, which is, is all equities. You can put this to be 75%. What this will do on the allocations tab is just grab uh, each of the tickers, uh, the, the current values, and it does the simple math necessary to give you the updated weightings on it. So it'll tell you what what the uh, the current holdings in this high yield bond fund strategy being at 25%, uh, what it will be reduced down to uh, once you actually deploy that within a, a client account. I, so what, I, I don't think you're going to make any progress here. Well, I think we should move on. Yeah, okay. I, I would rather show you, you folks out there it actually working than telling you how it's going to work. Because you're not going to remember any of this, are we? <laughs> uh, so, uh, what what can we go on next that will uh, divert us from this uh, this well, current uh, disaster? Well, as far as the as far as this, uh, just do you have any thoughts when it comes to merging models uh, as a whole? When it comes to it, I know that I've well, it's about suitability. You know, right. you're trying to you're trying to meet your suitability classes that you have within your practice. So, you know, uh, whether it's 60, 40, 80, 20, 70, 30, whatever it is, those models of that you want to do a lot of this stuff can actually be done at the custodial level and you can build these things up uh, and deploy them 
uh, from a scalability standpoint, we've actually usually suggested that you put together like a, a household approach where you maybe have a bond, you actually have a physical bond uh, account and then you have an equity account and then you put you you just split them up 60 40 and rebalance once a year or when they get out of whack pretty crazy uh you know if the equities do better than the bonds or whatever you can redeploy some of that capital uh last year that would have been the case you would have had equities doing really really well and the bonds not doing much at all and so you would have had to, to have a rebalancing moment which probably would have been best at you know year end or some some place and this is the other thing, I, you know, this is your business to run. And the way it's going to run best is when it's, it's, it's um, Bob's airplane theory. They, they, they always tell you if the, if the plane decompresses and the oxygen masks, you know, fall down, put your mask on first so you can help others. So you need to have your business structured so these, are, these elements happen in the environment that you want to be, uh, have control of. And it could be, you know, we rebalance in the third quarter, we could rebalance year in. Uh, maybe you take uh, extra time off at year in and then the, the last two weeks of December, this is not what you want to be doing with your life. And that's okay. So you can do it, you know, some other time. You can not, you, you know, you can decide where these rebalancing points happen and then you can go and, and visit the accounts and then that's an effort that you do. and, and uh, Remember, uh, your staff when they're working the weekends aren't aren't happy staff. So we want to get it all deployed so you can do it within a normal context of of how how life is uh, works best for for everybody. Yeah, and I know you know this is more of a greater concern where the custodian charges a per account fee, and uh, I've always been a big advocate. I know you're a big advocate of of just keeping those those strategies separate. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, th we've talked about this before, but it comes down to well, you know, what's your your benchmark? How do you know that strategy is doing well if it's doing right. you know eight percent or ten percent? Yeah, you got them blended. You don't know what you have. You've yeah, because you're you're trying to to benchmark that against something that doesn't exist because right. there isn't a, some some sort of risk tolerance blended uh, benchmark that that clients commonly refer to. They're they're looking at a couple of things. I know. Can you can you do anything like that in like uh, V dots where you could do a try to do a sixty forty index but two indexes on buy and hold and then yep. you can and that's exactly it that's that's what i've i've done before yeah. with advisors is you know i'll create a, a custom portfolio that's buy and hold just like you said 60 40 70 yeah. 30 and i'll grab you know the you know the s p uh ticker and yeah. maybe i'll grab a, a bond uh, aggregate index something like that to, to say this represents that type of strategy yeah but even then i mean it's 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 still sort of this vague thing because uh, the clients don't hear on on uh, at the end of every day on the news, what it, what the uh, the seventy thirty uh, risk tolerance uh, benchmark did today, they hear about the market, and then what the market is, it's it's the S and P, it's the Dow, it's it's these commonly used uh, benchmarks, even though it's completely separate from from any sort of strategy right. that they're actually using. Right. So um, I guess we'll move on in our PowerPoint. We got twelve minutes to go. Um, I won't say I was right now. <laughs> Uh, well, if, we didn't get through. <laughs> well, if problem. we were still on that, we wouldn't be close to it. We'd even be further down the trail. Uh, so uh, further, uh, not down the trail. Anyway, the, uh, you know, how many models should be in one account? Um, have have well, you discussed that? Because I, I yeah. you know. Yeah, and the, the tool does accommodate four. I think that's overkill. Um, you Having know, four? Yeah. Yeah. Certainly merging four. It's one thing to merge two strategies, maybe three, where you have... You know, you have your, your core, which is your, your equity side, you have your bond side, and maybe you have some sort of alternative basket. Uh, we, we put the, the fourth one in there just so that we'd have room, but well, maybe really when it comes down to it, you, yeah. you really should be keeping these separate. Maybe your strategy is confuse your clients and then yeah. you know, just have so much stuff in it, I can't figure out what you're doing. That's what will happen ultimately if you, that's why we've always just, you know, you have a two sleeve or three sleeve approach to this is gonna be really clean it's going to be really easy for most clients to understand and comprehend what you're doing. And when you do break them out, they can see each component. And then you can combine them in the household to show them what that overall returns are. But at least and go, hey, our equity component is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Our bond component, all those things are, are pretty important, I think, to have that perspective from, from, from that standpoint anyway. Uh, what we also have down here is, is you know, presenting the strategies. So... Uh, you know, when it comes comes down to actually presenting this, as I said before, 
uh, we're going to be putting out these these fact sheets at the end of the day today on the Premier side. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and show you where you can find these. Um, yes. Go ahead. So sure, we can do this in nine minutes. Sure, we can. <laughs> we can do it in two minutes. Oh, sure. Uh, go ahead and, and if you could uh, jump over to connect. Okay. All right. So probably the easiest place to find this is when you're on the dashboard. If you scroll down, you'll see over here on the right-hand side here, it says April fact sheets. Uh, we're going to have mo May's month end fact sheets. All you have to do is click on this, this file right here, and it'll take you to the dashboard that has all of the Premier portfolios broken down for the month of May. And uh, you can just click on, on any of these uh, to be able to download them, and it will have the in this case, it'll be through through the end of May. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is 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 also uh, publishing up the uh, the TD ones as well as the Schwab ones. I'll have to talk with uh, Mason, our web guy, to see if we could segregate those a little bit easier so they're not all blended. Um, but what, nonetheless, this is where you find uh, all those sheets. All you have to do is just click on on any one of these, and it'll download the PDF for you to take a look at. Uh, I think they're they're really sharp looking PDFs uh, that we have available to you uh, that has all the more in it than, than you even care to know probably about how the strategy is done, various different metrics on it. I think it's a phenomenal tool to use uh, when presenting the process. Or you could use a napkin. You could also use a napkin, which we've been told uh, numerous times by advisors that's all they use. Yeah. So um, anyway, uh, we're as we're winding down here, but I think these, these sheets are um, significant and uh, do they all say uh, all weather at the bottom? Uh, the, they this do. one still does, yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, there's an error, so they're going to be have to be updated. So, yeah, I got to. <laughs> anyway, you know, we work hard to try to put all these things together. So, um, you know, but there is there is a lot of information here, and certainly as a presentation tool, we probably should spend one whole show just talking about presenting to, to put that in a screen with uh, eight minutes ago is not, not fair. Is right. it really need to understand some of the components here and, and what they're, you know, what's actually happening with each one of these, these different elements. And, and there's a lot of really good stuff here. And there's things that, that I think you can put a really solid story together to talk to clients about what, what, they're, what you're going to be doing for them. And, but this does require that you actually do all the trades. So uh, this becomes uh, not too relevant if you're deviating. And it's, it certainly is a good story, but it, you know you want to be careful if the customer sees uh, the performance. If you're a, or a SEC RIA non-network person, you probably you can hand these out pretty easily. Uh, you can even get your logo on them and stuff. For, um, and that's that's something you can do. But you know the bottom line is. Um, you know, these are really great presentation tools. They certainly look good and, and are professional. And, uh, you know, we're, um, we're trying to uh, give you, uh, our, I guess our goal is that, and, and for everything we've done, is try to give you skill sets you don't, you don't normally have to be able to do some of the things with the dynamics of VPM, and then also to, to demonstrate what you do in a professional way. So, um, so what else do we got here, Mitch? Well, that's it without uh, going down too many more rabbit trails. Uh, some of the other things I'd just like to touch upon, uh, we do have, uh, we have updated the, the trade impact chart, and we've, we've had conversations internally about bringing over some of these same characteristics to our fact sheets. Uh, so, uh, you know, I guess one of the things that I'd like to know from advisors, uh, if, if you've had a chance to go through these, uh, you know, what components are you currently using from the fact sheets or the trade impact chart? Uh, just send us an email support at vpmpartners.com. Uh, we'd like to know what it is you guys actually are using. Uh, we can't obviously do much if you guys are using uh, napkins and refuse to, to use anything else uh, to embrace technology. Uh, but those of you that are using technology, we, we would like to hear back from you. Know what, what pieces of information would be valuable to you. Uh, so that we can bring those out more to the forefront, either on it, uh, current reports, or maybe we need to create some new reports that get right to the point, right to the heart of what it is you guys are presenting. Uh, we'd just like to hear back from the field uh, so that we can provide you guys with the best service, the best tools possible, so that you guys look uh, look as good as possible. Uh, you know, one of the things that, that we've long uh, adhered to is, the, is making this uh, white-labeled, making this so that you guys are 
reinforcing your own brand. Uh, you're presenting yourself out there. You're not selling our, uh, our name. You're, you're selling out your own name. And we want to have you guys have the best face possible to be able to do that. Yeah, and we're, we're working on a lot of stuff internally to be able to facilitate um, more of these, uh, I guess, customized approach as well as what Mitch is referencing here. So, um, yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, I think maybe even a, a survey would be, we can attempt a survey if you guys or those who are watching would actually answer it would be helpful. Right. Or you can just email us. Uh, we, yep. We'll take either. We'll try to make it easy and have the questions posed for you. But I, I, that might be something we'll embrace here. And if you see uh, something from us on a survey, then you know, take a minute out. It's going to help all of us. Because what we're trying to do is make sure the information on his reports are the things that you want to present. You know, maybe 80% of this information doesn't do anything for you. And if we find that to be true, there's always the 80-20 uh, rule, right? It's pretty standard in just about any industry. So 20% of you want everything and 80% of you don't care. And uh, from the standpoint of all these other details, there's one or right. two things that you use that are your impact and making your presentation. And, you know, I sat on your side of the desk for many years and that was, uh, you know, I had, I had elements that I felt was important. I was doing the rolling returns back in 1983 talking about this, uh, I, I ran uh, uh, Commodity Trading Advisor and other uh, types of management that we ran, and those rolling returns were key to our presentation. So when I built VPM, uh, I had to have rolling returns because I know how powerful they are to demonstrate and to build uh, appropriate expectations by clients, and especially when you're, you're running a commodity strategy, uh, you know, and. Uh, I probably should have stayed in that business because you know, everybody owns commodity futures funds now. Uh, I got out right when the turn was. I actually got out in uh, 2000. I was with two, two guys from First Boston, uh, Credit Suisse. Uh, we started a CTA. We, we're, we just weren't getting the traction. And right after we closed it down, everybody on the planet wanted to own commodity future funds. So it was, it was interesting. But the, you know, the, the bottom line is, you know that we have just a ton of information and uh, i sometimes have internal arguments that nobody maybe nobody cares we do have a lot of you that do use a lot of this stuff we just we just uh, you know we have the tendency like anything we it, you know it looks so good to us it's so powerful we know what could be done with it but that's maybe not what you guys want to do so that's why the feedback is really really important so we are spinning our wheels over here and trying to trying to do things that no one actually cares about that's that's frustrating as well it is so uh so we have uh, a minute and a half uh so let's move on and uh i guess we'll close out this show we will uh, come up with a better demo on thursday we'll make sure it works sure it's something to do with my computer uh something not being enabled or something i'm not sure but yeah. anyway um the, the goal, once again, of this show is to continue to have a conversation about using the product, about understanding exactly what's going on. So th this is meant to be conversational, th these shows, so that you can actually figure out, you know, grab elements and things that we've said. You know, we've, I have had some pretty good feedback from some folks at several of these shows. They've, they've gotten little, little bits of information that just made a huge impact on, on what on what they're doing so you know uh as always we appreciate w what you guys do for us and we try to do the best for you uh we we wake up every day trying to do that and uh with this five hours of broadcasting that we're doing it it, it still feels really good to me uh i'd like to see our our viewership up more than what it is but it still feels good uh, from the standpoint, I feel like we're getting a conversation out there to a lot of you and doing it, getting an impact that a lot of you are hearing things that you may never have heard had we not done this. And so for that, it's very valuable, at least to us. If, even if it's 50 people or so that are, are doing it, that's okay because that's impacting that section of our, uh, of, our, of our client base. So it's helping everybody uh, do a better job. So. Anyway, uh, tomorrow, Market Thunder, I guess, we'll, we'll move on to Market Thunder. Um, there's, uh, uh, I'm going to continue to kind of look at this inter inter international kind of 
view that that's kind of flowing out. I was looking at some charts that I've I've been looking at. So we'll go through that typical market review, and I think we uh, we went through the top 25 uh, of of that, and we'll we'll continue to uh, find other elements. I found something I'm going to bring up with Mitch. I think it'll be interesting looking at. Uh, you know, maybe the top movers for the quarter and the month and just looking at what's going on and how VPM is addressing those things. So thanks again, folks, for showing up. And we shall talk to you tomorrow morning or actually afternoon if you're on the East Coast at noon. Uh, get lunch, sit down, hang out with us. Uh, we're going to we're working on trying to we had a fairly failed effort at getting a call in show going yesterday offline. We're going to try again today to see if we can get that going. If we get that going, then uh, we're going to start doing some call-ins. We're working on getting uh, the right format to do that. So have a great day, folks. We'll talk to you tomorrow.